January 1942, and the Allies have recaptured France. The British and American forces, taking advantage of Axis distractions in the Russian theater and the African theater, launched a series of attacks into German-held French territory and in a lightning campaign have recaptured Paris. The French, with a national rising of spirit in support of the new French Republic, rose up and plenty of forces joined them. Vichy France was dissolved and all Vichy forces marched to align themselves to the French Republic. And now the new battle lines are drawn in Picardy, Alsace-Lorraine and southern France against the Axis forces. The fortress Europe in the Western theater with France has now collapsed and Germany finds itself somewhat faced with a proud new and glorious opponent in the form of the new Republic of France. But the Axis take heart because good situations occur in the Eastern theater against the Russians. Transcaucasus is wide open, worth five IPP, and the entirety of the southern flank of the Russian state is wide open, collectively being able to collect, the Germans might be able to collect something to the tune of... 7 IPP in the subsequent turn from the Russians, leaving only the Soviet forces in the north with Leningrad, Smolensk, and Moscow as bastions of strength. The Axis focus in the east may have paid off at the expense of losing France, but this is perhaps the great move that could occur at this point, and perhaps now the Germans can turn their attention once again towards crushing France for a second time. Things look good enough for the German forces. The Japanese, on the other hand, have had a pretty fantastic season of warfare as well, recapturing the entirety of Southeast Asia from the FEC. Anam Tonkin, Anam Tonkin, Siam, Cochin China, and British Malaysia, they have captured them from the FEC and beat back the FEC forces into this territory. The FEC, for their part, have made an attack against Southern Iran, and though it didn't pay off, they took off some of the Imperium, Nova Roma Imperium's forces in Southern Iran. And now the FEC is once again condensed to their original front lines that existed prior to the war breaking out. The CCP, after reaching out and capturing Shantong, Hopei, and controlling Tsinghai, have seen the Japanese capture these territories from them and have condensed themselves back to Shanxi as the Japanese hold the bulk of territories in the surrounding area. The Japanese have somewhat recovered from their disastrous attack against Hawaii. The Americans have defeated their fleet, but the Japanese still hold a nice sizable fleet off the coast of Cochin China here in, in uh, the, well, off the coast of Philippines here in the South China Sea. The Americans, for their part, are devoting some attention towards the Pacific theater, but a bulk of their attention is also going into the Atlantic theater as they line up forces to help liberate France, to put pressure against the Italians in Gibraltar, and otherwise make a mess of things for the Axis Axis attempt at controlling enough victory objectives so as they can win this conflict. Welcome all, my name is Jinx and I'm playing as a Nova Roma Imperium here. You see these little roundels here, I've just created them for the fun of it, for the flavor purposes, with Caesar Victor Emmanuel III controlling in Rome here for an extra little bit of flavor that, that doesn't change the game in any way except for flavor purposes. Let's dive into the Italian turn as my last turn playing as a Japanese was something to the tune of a feature length film, <laughs> 48 minutes, so I may as well Go quickly with the Italian turn here. I've taken some notes here in, uh, perhaps it's in the white. It's in the white here. So I have to change colors here for myself. Sorry about this. There we have it, in the white. And so we have some instructions as to what we want to do this turn. Let's turn our attention to the tech chart first of all. Actually, let's comment on the income we have. We had 26 IPP to spend. We had to reduce it by one by the British capturing or convoying us for one buck here in the, what's it called? Tripoli, uh, Napoli, Tripoli line. Let's go to the tech chart and see if we have any successes in our tech rolls here. We are going for Airborne Doctrine. We need a six or less to succeed. Let's see what the result is here. And we succeeded at a 10. So we've got up to uh, stage four, completed our Airborne Doctrine tech. Turning our attention to the uh, to our purchases here. I'm going to zero that one out. We don't have one buck left because we're converted. We look at our notebook here. We're going to go for one Colonial Infantry, one Regular Infantry, Two elite airborns, since we have now caught that tech or got that tech. We have two marines being purchased, one infantry upgrade from um, one militia upgrade to infantry, and one militia. So that's what our purchases are this turn. Let's go to combat moves, starting with our submarine forces in this theater here. In C zone A37, we're going to convoy raid this convoy line with our Italian sub in that C zone. In um, A53, we have a submarine. It comes across to A47 and engages this convoy line as well. So that's our two combat moves. We're sending in our submarine and a destroyer from Gibraltar, and they're going to go to M4 and attack this French submarine in this season. 
or daring to raid our Italian convoy lines, and then we turn our attention to the African theater. Now, one of the questions I have, which I never found the results to, is if I can build a militia in here in Belgian Congo. Now, I know with islands, you have to have a port for them to be being able to build a um, militia there. But in this case, we don't have rivers accessing to a minor factory. We don't really have anything going for us. Um, we do have a, a route to our major factory, but it is still quicker through the sea zone as well. So um, my thinking is I can build it. It won't be interdicted as long as I can wipe out this submarine in the sea zone here. That's my thinking there in Belgian Congo. Now, I might not be able to build in Belgian Congo as well because there's no railway access to that territory. Uh, the rivers don't connect to anything. So in that case, if I cannot build a militia in Belgian Congo, this infantry is going to stay here. From Tanganyika, one infantry is coming to Rhodesia as well as one fighter to attack this territory here. And uh, this character here is going to stay in Belgian Congo if I can't build a militia. So I'll send in, I'll roll two dice, but I'll keep one separate. And then I'm going to attack South Africa. Now, I don't have three infantry here. I already moved them to the battle board. But these three infantry sitting in Cape Town are going to be attacking South Africa. I'm also going to send a heavy cruiser. Three transports are coming across, loading up these infantry from Madagascar. So we have in total two Marines, one colonial infantry, three infantry coming into that sea zone. And let me double check my notes here. I believe that's it. Oh yeah, aircraft as well, tactical bomber and fighter coming into the fight. And that takes care of our con uh, our con all of our attacks. Let's start with our convoying over here. So the one off the coast of Brazil, <clears throat> red is our attacker, blue the defender. Let's see what the results are here. We have three, four, five. So we have five. So we damage them to the max on that convoy line. Let's roll for the other one near to America there because we could still get that one for an extra two. 3-3. Three, three. So my thinking is that I've maxed up both convoy lines because the Americans don't have any technology that assists them in this case. So one, two, three, and over here, one, two. So my thinking is uh, we'll take two away from the Caribbean line and then three away from the New York Rio de Janeiro line for a maximum of five. That's the idea there. Now for our attacks here in M4, a destroyer and a seaplane. Let's roll those dice out here. We have a seaplane at three, a destroyer at four, and the defense for the um, defense is going to be... I'm going to roll a different color dice here. I'm going to roll a red dice here for defense. Let's get rid of these two dice. Put them over here. So these are the two attackers. <laughs> seaplane at blue, and the teal is the destroyer. And I know we usually use red for the aggressor, but there we have it. So we got four for the defense of the whatever the teal one is which would be this one here. So the destroyer managed to sink that submarine. The seaplane missed, and the submarine gets to roll back out of three. Fingers crossed they hit nothing because we don't need that in our life. Okay, it just stopped abruptly. But there we have it, 11. But it seemed to lose velocity quite quickly. So yeah, we managed to sink that submarine with no consequences. For a bit there, I thought they were going to hit us. So seaplane is down, leaving us with just a destroyer and seaplane there. Seaplane. Incidentally, is going to come back to uh, Gibraltar. Was it? Um, it might actually stay in Sicily. That way we have equal range to wherever we need to go up here in the Adriatic or wherever it turns out uh, the enemy is at. Yep, that's our thinking. Okay, moving on from that to the next conflict, it being Rhodesia here. So we have one infantry and a fighter going into that uh, territory. So we're going to send a fighter in there and a Rhodesian infantry. And then um, if I can't build that militia in Belgian Congo, this that this dice is not going to count. But if, if I can, then it's going to participate in the fight. So the red is a maybe being involved in there. And if anybody has the answer to this question of if it can go or not, let me know. So we have a pretty bad dice roll here with no results. And we see what the enemy has. The enemy might get us for one here. If I take even uh, one hit, I think I'll retreat because I don't want to lose my fighter. One of these has to go badly for us, right? And the four. So they scored one hit against us um and we're going to retreat from that fight moving our infantry if it came into the fight back to rhodesia and the other one gets taken out the map here um rhodesia is still in british hands we're going to send this fighter he's going to go two spaces back to sudan nothing is nearby so i think that's what we'll do here yep all right now for this major attack in this sea zone so we have quite a few ships going in here. we have a heavy cruiser Destroyer can't shore bombardment, but we have a bunch of infantry. Three, six, seven, eight, nine infantry. We've laid out the dice here in anticipation for the fight. So we have one red dice rolling first for shore bombardment, scoring at a two. So let's see what the result is. We hope for a good result, but it's not going to matter too much because they have a militia. So that's off the table. And now we have our dice here. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. 
tactical is yellow and the fighter at green. Zooming out a bit, rolling the dice here, chucking them down the chute, hoping for at least two hits. And we have we have only one hit in total. Yeah, one hit in total. Our tactical bomber missed, but our fighter hit, so there's that. Let's see what the, the enemy has in response. They have a militia and six infantry in that territory. And now they will likely get two hits, which we have two marines for, but three hits, man. If they get three hits, that's going to not be very pleasant for us. One, two, two hits. All right, so we lost our marines, and they lost their militia. So right off the hop, uh, they take two more uh, They give us two more casualties than we took off of them. So that only removes uh, purple dice here. And there's six dice remain. Yes. Hopefully I didn't mess that up somehow. Okay, we take off two purple ones here and go with our second round of attacks. One hit here, and that's it. Just one hit. So each round we're going to do one hit, apparently. Okay, and in response, our enemy is going to roll six dice here. Again, this is roughly going to be two hits. Three, a one. I'll go over top of it like this. A three and a one. So two hits against us. So we take off, let's see, one, two. And they, in exchange, are now down to five dice. All right, so we have to make sure that we only roll five dice in this upcoming turn. And likewise, they only roll five dice as well. So, sorry, five purple dice, I should state, for clarity's purposes. Did we take off our casualties? We did. Okay, here we have two hits. Two hits. That's the infantry that roll them, so that's not too bad. Two hits we can take. We're hoping our aircraft would be a little bit more, have a bit more pizzazz, but with three hits, uh, that leaves them only three units left over. Again, they should score roughly two hits here. No, they don't. So um, they don't score that time, but this time we scored against them. So two infantry down. Maybe it wouldn't be exactly two hits. It'd be 1.75 hits. So yeah, they, uh, they undershot that time around. And now we go into our next round of combat. Oopsie daisy, that's not a roll. My first, I played in one of the first YouTube wars out there, or the first YouTube war out there. So we uh, scored three hits there, and it wipes them out. One, two, three, with our tactic bomber. I played one of the first YouTube wars out there, and the the commentary on that was really quite astounding because it was one of the first. It's kind of neat. Um, people really watched all the dice rolls, and it was really neat that you could really learn a lot by everybody's comments and what they said and what tips they had. It was really neat to see. No hits here on the last round of combat. So we managed to wipe them out and not take exorbitant casualties. But we did take a, we did go in there with lots of firepower and lots of uh, absorption. But yeah, there we have it. Four, five, six, seven, and we lost four dudes. So there we have it. Our two Marines are gone. One, two, three, four. And we capture the territory and the British... You win some, and you lose some as well. But generally, we seem to be winning. We come into things with a lot of firepower, and it seems to work out in our favor. There we have it. South Africa is in our hands. All right. Uh, for our aircraft, we have to land them here in Cape Town. I wish it was otherwise, but unfortunately, there's no place that they can go except Cape Town. If we controlled Rhodesia, well, if we had controlled it last turn, it would have been a different story, but there we have it. Okay. Now we move on to the non-combat. So let me uh, refresh my notes here. Italian Somaliland, Air Force moves to Sudan and to Cape Town. Africa, we have our fleet on the move here. So we have, um, I'm going to leave this transport for a moment, a heavy cruiser and two destroyers and our battleship from this position. They're all going to come to M2 off the coast of Malta. Off the coast of Malta. Um, we still have other stuff on the go here. Okay. Then we have another transport here. Let me take a look here. Gibraltar light cruiser to M4 as well. So basically we're moving the bulk of our fleet into this position here into M4. So we have present here three destroyers, one light cruiser, a heavy cruiser, 
and a battleship, a damaged battleship for that matter. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put the heavy cruiser into port, providing an extra militia in this theater here. All right, now uh, notebook again. Yeah, Gibraltar strategic naval move one transport with one infantry to Tripoli. So that's this guy here from Madagascar. Am I thinking he could go one, two, three, four, and drop him off in Tripoli? Joining this fleet in this position here. What else do we got going on? We have uh, rail tunas from Bavaria to northern Italy. So kind of generally a movement now here. So the Italians came a little bit late to the party to help secure France, I guess. And and the Rus uh, the Germans requested our attention here in the Russian theater once again. So two infantry are going to be railed all the way to this position here in southern Belarusia, where we have to switch gauges. And uh, I think that's where we sit here for now in southern Belarusia. And I believe that about takes care of all of our movements here. We just go down to place unit phase. So with units, we have these guys right here. Let's slide them a little bit closer to where the action is. Okay, our two elite are going to come up here in... Um, two elite are going to come up here in uh, northern Italy. We also have a colonial is going to show up in Tripoli. Our militia in Tripoli is going to be upgraded to infantry. We have our militia that may or may not be going to Belgian Congo. Now, if I can't build in Belgian Congo, I'll give an alternative as to where it should be placed. I'm going to build a Marine here in Cape Town. I'm going to build another Marine up in, uh, up in this neck of the woods in Northern Italy and one infantry here in Cape Town, uh, in Cairo. So this militia, I haven't thought about where it could put it, but if I can't build in Belgian Congo, Hmm. That's a tough one. I'll think about it a little bit. I, I kind of was banking on the idea that I could build it in Belgian Congo, but um, if I can't build in Belgian Congo, I think I might just build it in... I might just refund the money. Yes, that's what it was. If I can't build it, the, the militia, then I'll just refund the money and I'll build an air base, likely in Tobruk. But I, I want to double check something before that. Okay, gents, I think that's everything that needs to be resolved. I'm going to quickly adjust the income on the tracker here. So my income went from 20 to 21, not a very grandiose increase. And the British went down to 18. So really not too terribly much. We did manage to wipe out a sizable force, which is something to be not something to be scoffed at either. So we got man, uh, South Africa. We still are going to be faced with uh, colonial infantry showing up in Rhodesia, unfortunately. So yeah, that'll be fun. All right. So we are looking now at income of 26, 27 for next turn. Not great, but not nothing either. So that's always nice. Oh, actually, I think since we have the presence of enemy ships in the Mediterranean, we might get a little less. Now it might just be enemy warships. Oh, sorry, surface warships. Nope. No enemy warships. M10 and M12. Okay, so we see the presence of a uh, French unit here, and that decreases our uh, that decreases us by two. So that's why they put it up in that corner. So we have 25 bucks to spend on the subsequent turn. Yeah, 25 bucks to spend, which, yeah, that's too bad. That's what we made last turn. But hopefully we could change that out with a general push here in northern Algeria. Next turn with uh, at least a couple units gained here, a couple territories gained here. I'm thinking two territories here and then one here in Rhodesia. That might help change the balance to some extent. Excellent. Okay, all. Thanks all for watching. And uh, we pass it on to the Americans. Cheers.